Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at here on this fine Monday. It is the start of the work week upon us. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.6. Uh, also a 1.3 earthquake. I think that's some type of query explosion, a uh, query blast out around the northern Oklahoma area. They have it listed here as a query blast. Um, yeah, northwest of Tulsa, Oklahoma. So take a look here at the west coast. Uh, a little bit of activity still from, uh, I believe these are from last night. Actually, it looks like we had a couple more here in northern California. 2.8 and a 2.9 just after midnight now this is at the southern end of the cascadia subduction zone been amplified out here in terms of earthquake activity and um, obvious signs of some strain uh, you know i'm not saying 100 percent certainty that we're going to see a bigger earthquake out here along the cascadia but the signs have been kind of pointing out here looking uh, quite stressed actually uh, got got the gorda ridges out here this is a couple earthquakes here um from yesterday that was uh Probably applying further strain here against the southern end of the Cascadia. Now, this is a divergent boundary zone. Separation of the sea cr the crust here on the seafloor. That uh, obviously happens over time. You get these ridges built up. But also, at the same time, you're pushing what's left of the Gorda Plate underneath the North American region here, underneath Northern California. So, the North American Plate boundary and the Gorda Plate line is right about here at the Cascadia subduction zone. Yesterday, tremor activity was uh, somewhat elevated as well. Let me show you guys that here across Northern California, right here. So obviously, we're getting that uh, subduction happening uh, with the elevated tremor downstream. The earthquake activity in the Gorda Ridges applying for their strain out here. And when we see the tremor activity stir up downstream, it looks as though that's um, definitely stressing the area upstream here where we're seeing uh, this most recent activity here at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, upper twos. And of course, uh, it's, you know, it's been a somewhat amplified out here with a couple earthquakes directly on the Cascadia subduction zone. This one was from uh, about three days ago. So just kind of keeping an eye on it. Uh, nothing big yet, but uh, all the signs out here are kind of pointing towards continual strain out against the northern California area. Bay Area pretty quiet aside from one earthquake. Well, this is way south of the bay off the creeping section of the San Andreas Fall to 2.8. Not uh, anything big, but uh, just lets us know that the plate is moving out there for sure along the creeping section. Southern California, last night, a couple earthquakes there off the coast of the Santa Monica area. And now it looks like uh, most of these, yeah, we had one more, it looks like, just before I went to bed, 1.9. There in that mix of earthquake activity. Um, over the last seven days, well, most of this struck here yesterday. Uh, a little bit of earthquake activity out there along the Santa Monica Bay Fault. It's a thrust fault that sits out there off the coast of Los Angeles. Not listed up here on the USGS map, but it runs roughly about right here. So make sure I turn that off. Uh, so just kind of watching that. Uh, nothing big happening out here across Southern California for now. But as always, there's a lot of regions that are built up and have been building up steam and stress for hundreds of years, if not thousands of years at certain other uh, fault systems, such as the Puente Hills Stress Fault there that runs underneath Los Angeles. Uh, Nevada, 4.0 this morning. 2.3 and a 2.9 as well. A couple earthquakes here, it looks like, just after midnight in the uh, decent range. Now, that's, uh, I don't know. We haven't really had any earthquake activity out here. Near Valmy, I'm guessing that's right. We're Val Valmy, Valm, oh, I'm going to slaughter this one. I'll Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, I have no, no issue with being corrected. Uh, Valmy, I'm guessing. Uh, Nevada, 4.7 miles deep 6.9 uh, out there on the fault system unsure on which fault system is striking on but i, I have noticed nevada uh, increasing earthquake activity out here in a couple different regions and when we see these areas of new movement right obviously that means that the strain is increasing out here we're getting that pressure migration out across the nevada area and uh, like i say I don't recall the last time we've seen any earthquake activity out here 
Uh, Sheldon National Wildlife Refuge, yes. The Yerrington, Nevada area, yes. That's where that 5.7 struck uh, last year. End of last year. But, uh, yeah, some newer activity stretching out there across the um, northern Nevada area. Desert southwest, pretty quiet. Nothing showing up on Yellowstone. I went ahead and looked and see if they added any of the quakes over the weekend. Um, maybe a fraction of them. A fraction of the quakes that struck out there. Uh, let me show you guys right now, right now chart, some wind coming in. That's that darker reading there on the graph. A couple of smaller earthquakes here last night and this morning. But the activity that was noted here, I can just barely see it on that one. Yeah, you can see it on this one too. It's a split. So if we go right here, should be able to see all the earthquake activity of striking out there. There's a lot more than that fraction of 10 earthquakes that they showed here. Uh, they're probably just picking one. Okay, we'll do this one. We'll do this one. That one will work. This one will work. But literally, there's probably 50 or 60 earthquakes that struck out there on um, Saturday. They're at Yellowstone National Park outside of Maple Creek area. Uh, I believe the Madison River area is the epicenter of the earthquake activity, at least from what I can see here. It's picking up a bunch of very small quakes in there as well, so that... Tells me right there that's pretty close to the epicenter. Uh, but, yeah, USGS reporting a fraction of them over here. But, uh, you know, there was a lot, more than, <laughs> a lot more than five or six or seven. Just my observation there. Nothing big. All under 2.0, as I explained. But uh, still, uh, a lot more. Hopefully someone will account for them. Up here around the uh, Illinois area, Indianapolis, right on the border. Actually, it looks right on the Indianapolis border um, let's see. I mean, Indiana. What am I talking about here? Goodness. <laughs> Brain fog. It's Monday. It happens. Indiana border. I'm not for sure when we created a new state out there, but... All right, 2.4, that's from yesterday, it looks like. I don't believe that was added on the map last night. So this is after the fact, a little shaking going on out there near Mount Carmel. All underneath this area, about eight miles or so. Nothing big, just a little sporadic earthquake activity out there on occasion across the east. As far as worldwide activity goes, let's go ahead and check out the largest magnitude here. Um, goes to, at least this is in the last 24 hours, goes to a 5.6 in the Indonesia area. I believe this originally came in as a six-pointer. It got downgraded there to a 5.6, about 17 miles deep there for that earthquake. Uh, no big earthquake activity today so far, following you know, a bunch of a bunch of elevated movement out here recently with some, some seven-pointers. And in fact, you know, the largest... Uh, Largest earthquake so far this year goes to the Burma area, Myanmar region for the 7.7. That was a very damaging earthquake, very shallow earthquake as well. Had that been much, much deeper underneath this region, then we'd be talking about less damage there. But uh, that struck, you know, right underneath this area, very shallow, highly populated region. And uh, man, a lot of, lot of damage out there. Still looking for the eight pointer question is where is it going to be i just don't know i mean there's a number of spots out here alaska area a couple ones and some twos really nothing major going on up there for now i want to i do want to double check the canada station here because of the uh, tremor activity occurring up there off the uh into the cascadia subduction zone i'm really not seeing a whole lot of activity um, out there, a lot of older movement there across the northern end of the Juan de Fuca plate. Not a whole lot happening up in Canada. I guess the, the latest quake going to be up here on the Alaska side. Um, 4.3. I believe USGS is showing that earthquake. Yes, they are. <laughs> These guys are reporting it at 3.8, though. Is that the same earthquake? Or are they talking about this earthquake here? I, a little interesting. Uh, 
All right, uh, let's see what else we got here. Double check the globe, see if there's anything that we're missing. Got some, a little bit of further activity out here in the Atlantic again. You guys remember here, this whole movement of six pointers and seven pointers started following uh, some sixes out here in the Mid Atlantic Ridge. It went quiet yesterday. Now we got some further activity out here, roughly within that same region as the uh, 6.6 .6 and the 6.1 that struck here over the last few days. So that being said, uh, we could be uh, looking at maybe some elevated activity out here once again because it sure popped up following those two six-pointers. Goodness, we, that's when we've seen the uh, elevated activity around the Myanmar area and just a swarm of larger earthquakes. So we'll watch that throughout the day today. I'm not seeing any... Uh, any larger activity right now across the Mediterranean area. Uh, a slight uptick here across the Prue-Chile Trench. Some fours out there. Pretty good cluster of quakes. Uh, and it's very visible here on the USGS map as well. With a 4.5, 4.4, excuse me, being the latest out there. A mixed bag of deep earthquakes and shallow earthquakes here across this bend area in the Prue-Chile Trench. So watch that. Could be seeing some larger scale activity there as well. Uh, New Zealand, fairly quiet. Not a whole lot popping down there for now, but it's been going on all around them. I mean, I guess they've had a little bit of activity recently. Uh, let's see. They had that 6-pointer, 6 6.7 down there off the South Island area. Oh, a week ago. A couple other 5s and 4s in there as well. Still got to watch this region right here of the Hikurangi subduction zone. A lot of activity north, but uh, kind of skipping over this area. Of the Hikurangi. That's capable of producing a, uh, a big earthquake. So keep your eyes peeled. Space weather activity. Still watching uh, 4048 out here. That's a fairly decent sized sunspot and fairly complex at that. Let me show you guys the magnetogram image here. Looking uh, still fairly active out here. Quite a few different popcorn colors on the north and south here and east and west. Very complex sunspot. Those are the ones you got to watch out for for some stronger flaring. That's 4048. Right now, uh, this is showing a beta gamma structure, but it's looking more or less like a beta gamma delta structure there with all those different uh, polarities. And it is growing. So it's a rapidly growing sunspot that, uh, you know, again, is possibly we could see some X flare activity from it soon. I'm issuing a 20% chance for X flare. Solar ham here has 15. Uh, in at about 60% chance. Now, proton events were stirring up last night. Um, I believe that this is from the flare uh, that uh, popped here a couple days ago. You guys remember that massive uh, flare that produced a huge CME? Well, it was directed away from Earth there on the uh, <clears throat> excuse me northeastern side of the limb, limb of the sun. And uh, I think we're just finally getting some protons, although it was a few days ago. It's quite rare to take days for the protons to reach here. So uh, either way, we got that occurring at the nor northern and the southern polar regions there. Nothing uh, as far as any major flaring goes right now. This 4048 here is still sizzling a little bit with some sea flare activity. It will be rotating into an Earth-directed view. Uh, a little bit more squarely lined up in the days ahead. That's when we need to watch it for any uh, Earth-directed CMEs. <coughs> Excuse me. So, no major roars in the forecast for now. There's our, there's our flare threat. Fairly decent. Uh, as far as any other sunspots out here, let me see. Look at this area down here. getting a little bit of growth on this little sunspot in fact that's a growing sunspot there it looks a lot more complex than what it did last night so watch that one that's a newer sunspot and uh, really not too concerned with anything else out here but we do have 4048 and um, this one should be named here pretty soon storm prediction center all that severe weather that was happening yesterday has shifted all across the uh, east here on the eastern seaboard region got uh, some enhanced area for some tornado activity there in the uh five and two percent wind and just a little bit of hail threat out there as well for a start of the work week and now tomorrow got a uh, return of the severe weather 
back across the Southern Plains area, Central and Southern Plains, it looks like, bringing with it another chance of, wow, tornado potential there outside of which, uh, within Wichita. Wichita is included in that 10%. Got some wind and some hail threats out there for tomorrow's severe weather day. Goodness, it is that time of day or that time of uh, that time of season, which could happen any day, right? Spring weather. A uh, quick glance here at the next close approach asteroids. See if anything is headed towards this planet. That's a surprise. Well, I guess it wouldn't be a surprise, right, if it, uh, if it was listed up here. But I'm not seeing anything right now. Pretty safe. Pretty solid out there in terms of any uh, close approach asteroids for now. All right. Uh, let's see what else. Anything major going on? A little earthquake there on Mendocino. That's there in Northern California. Let's see if they're reporting that earthquake. Uh, looks like they are. All right. A little 1.8 at 1120. That would match the signal right here. 1120. 1820 UTC time. A uh, quick glance here at the Big Island of Hawaii. Kill it, kill it way a volcano, that is. <clears throat> what is up today with my voice? Hello. It's working, but uh, it's, uh, I don't know, something in the air. Kill it way a volcano. Uh, still going up in, ter in terms of deflation or inflation. <laughs> today, opposite day. It's not April Fool's yet either. That's tomorrow. Got to watch out for April Fool's Day. That's a good day to stay home. Too many pranksters out there. All right, so we're uh, almost at a peak level observed from our last eruption. This is the uh, inflation going on, filling back up with magma. No different than our last one here, so we'll just kind of watch it and see what happens there across the Kilauea Volcano. As far as the webcams up there go, let's go ahead and take a look here at the uh, summit area. <clears throat> Looks like a beautiful baby blue clear sky up there. Absolutely love that color. One of my favorite colors. Yeah, just some volcanic gases, some cumulus clouds there overhead. And uh, yeah, it looks like a, uh, actually it looks like a beautiful day. 73 degrees out there. We got a chance of thunderstorms out here in, uh, in uh, Northern California. Not really expecting much. It might be a few showers and thunderstorms out here around Redding and Chico today. We're included in that uh, thunderstorm area, which is fairly broad. But far as severe weather goes, nothing really forecasted here for our area. Just uh, some thunderstorm potential. All right. Have a good one, folks. We'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on this evening for the Monday night update. Unless something major happens, of course, right? It's been active. we got that newer activity out in the Atlantic right now. Uh, our previous activity that popped out here, those sixes, really stirred things up with seven pointers. We'll see what happens today. This five pointer struck, uh, let's see, when was that? We've had a, a few hours here since it happened. 6.30 this morning here, my time. So I don't see anything elevated over here. Right now, it looks like all the elevated activity has stirred up uh, across the South America area. And during these events... During these uh, divergent boundary activity, uh, the pressure strain can go either way in terms of the migration pattern out here. Uh, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge right here, this is where the earthquake activity is happening. Notice the arrows point away from each other. It could add further strain here across South America, the Caribbean plate. But in the last couple events here, it's really ramped up with moving all that pressure here on the uh, Africa plate moving off to the um, to the northeast so we'll just kind of watch it see if anything else kicks up there today in terms of larger scale potential have a good one we'll see you guys out here tonight take care folks